morning, Rock Church. Good morning. Welcome to the Rock Church. We're glad you're here today. Let's be standing. We're going to sing praises to our King.
Knowing that, my question to you would be, so what are you waiting for then? If He's waiting on you, what are you waiting on? Come on. Come to the cross of Jesus.
faithfulness in the past, faithfulness in the present, faithful in the future. Amen.
Father, we thank you. We praise you for the blessing that you have given us. The blessing of your great salvation. None of us deserving it, but all of us standing in need of it. And I thank you for a love that would take you to the cross to where you would shed your blood, you would give your very life for each one of us. And so this morning we bow before you. We stand before you. And we say thank you. Thank you for what you have done for us. And then thank you for giving us the privilege to pass it along to the next generation. And the generation after that, as we continue to exalt and proclaim the risen Jesus. Thank you, Father, for moving in us and among us. In your great name we pray. Amen. Now I'm going to invite you to sit down. And in this time, I'm inviting you to spend a few moments in prayer and allow the Lord just to speak to your heart. Take the time to give Him thanks for what He has done for you in giving His life for you. it and broke it apart and gave it to his disciples and said take and eat for this is my body he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying this is the blood of the new covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins each one drink
Yes. I don't know if you realize this. I mean, you are a recipient of the blessing of God. I mean, that's a cool thought when you think about it. That He loves you so much that He would He would save you from your sin and that He would bless your life in the process. That's a big deal. Thank you, Father, for that. Well, what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a brief little break, a five-minute break. This gives parents the opportunity to take their kids back to Kids Rock. It gives the rest of you the opportunity to greet one another and just welcome them in the name of Jesus to the Rock Church. Okay, let's do that. We'll be back in five minutes. We're doing all that work yes. that had nothing to do with okay. somebody turning them in. Um, before we get digging into Ephesians, I, I know that I told you last week that we're on the very last topic that comes up in the book of Ephesians. It's not trouble. I'm just informing you that even though we're going to do that last section today, we've got to do it some more next week. Okay, <laughs> So we're not yet out of the woods with Ephesians. Uh, but you'll, you'll see why as, as we go along. I want to remind everyone that, uh, let's see, this coming Friday here at the, the auditorium here, there is going to be a concert by the River Jam Band. And, they, you know, it hasn't been that long ago since they've been here, but Joe had requests from a number of people that they bring them back so they can bring their friends to the concert and that kind of thing. So I encourage you to get your tickets for that. The difference between this one and the last concert is 10 bucks. All right? So it, it costs 10 bucks a ticket, but I'm just going to tell you, you will really, really enjoy this concert as they take you back to some of the oldies but goodies. And, um, and so I, I hope you will make the time to do that. Joe will be out, out there selling tickets. And I saw some of you buying them as you came in the door because he's not going to let you off the hook. Uh, so we've, we've got that. The second thing I share with you is this. Because uh, we, we misplaced or lost the list of people from the church who will provide food for folks who are going through times where they've lost a loved one. They'll provide funeral food. We need, if, if you were on that list or if you would like to be on that list, we need you to stop by the table out in the lobby and just simply sign your name. There's a little piece of paper there with lines. It just gives your name and the information we need to connect with you. Opal Porter does she spearheads this ministry and she does an outstanding, outstanding job taking care of the needs like that when they arise. So she simply needs your contact information. If you weren't on that or don't remember anything about that, then if you would like to be called on to maybe prepare a dessert or a side dish, The Rock typically gets all the meat and, and green beans and mashed potatoes and that kind of thing. And then we all just kind of fill in the areas where it's needed, and Opal takes care of that. So if you can help us out with that, that would be great. I invite you to put your name down. Uh, it will ask for where you live, because if, if it's a need that arises in Portsmouth, then that's where we'll contact the Portsmouth people. If it's out here in the Berg, we contact the Berg people. If it's uh, out in South Webster, there's only a handful of people that live in South Webster. And so we'll contact the Berg people and the Portion people. Uh, I'm just kidding. South Webster people, you Jeeps, you're welcome here. Okay? That's right, because we take anybody. Uh, I think I'm digging myself a hole, aren't I? All right. So with, with that said, yeah, get to your notes, Rick. Get to your notes. With that said, I want to I wanted take the time, just a couple of minutes, to do this. Just a couple of minutes, right? Just a couple of minutes. So Diane, come up here. Um, oh, oh. There you go. There you go. Yep, yeah, that's right. Just ask. Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. Come on up. I'm good. I'm good. I know you are. Now, I'm on mic 14, okay? I, I I don't know if I can give you the mic. Uh, you just don't take it. That's right. Those of you that don't know, God has placed a really special desire on on the heart of Diane. 
And that desire was that it, she lives in Portsmouth. There, in the whole area, we have an issue with homelessness. We have an issue with, um, I guess, food deprived, food shortages, uh, just difficult situations. Diane sees that not just as an opportunity to step in and offer a temporary meal or clothing or things like that, but she also sees that as the opportunity, the door of opportunity to step into these lives and share with them the love of Jesus. And, and so she sets aside a little bit of time. She sets aside, really, it's the big day has always been in July. And she's down at Tracy Park. And this year, really, seriously, it, it looked like almost like the Scioto County Fair with everything that was there. It was an amazing thing that she put together. And so God has used her to do that and bring together a lot of churches and a lot of people with one mission, and that's to tell people about Jesus. So tell us how that went. Oh, my. Uh, there was... Um there were so many churches there and recovery uh, resources uh, and the Jubilee gang was there this, this time for the first time and I mean it was just over the top. I said the Lord showed up and showed off yes, he did. like only he can. I said we, we think in our little finite like minds you know what's going to happen or anything else but he is so much bigger than we can even think. And he does so much more than we uh, can imagine doesn't he? Yeah. Just stepping out in obedience and trusting him. That's mm -hmm. that's what it's been all along. And he just keeps, I, I said, he reminded me of that how far things have come from the porch to the park. I know, it started on our front porch. <laughs> and, and now it's out in the park. It, it's, it's amazing. It, it really is. So in this last event, um, I, I know the numbers you keep track of. I know the numbers that are real important to you. And that is, it's not about how many pairs of jeans and things you handed out or how many hot dogs you gave yeah. out. It's about how many people responded to the message yeah. of Jesus. And so you had that going on with the Jubilee Gang to a bunch of children and families. Yeah. You had that going on from the stage and in other places in the prayer tent. Uh, there's um, something going on all over the whole entire park. This oh, time. yeah. So, how many people that you know of uh, expressed faith in Jesus Christ? Okay, uh, at the Jubilee game, we had uh, 10 adults and two children because, I mean, his message is just out for whosoever. Mm -hmm. And then over uh, with uh, Pastor Mike Queen at the prayer canopy, there was seven adults that gave their hearts to the Lord. That is so cool. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's what it's all about. I know. I know. And there was another, another guy that I met that he was, uh, his name's Mark, and I said uh, he was getting ready to be homeless, and he's still drinking. He had, uh, he had been off of uh, drugs, but he's still drinking. And I, to I told him, I met him on Friday night, when I was down there, uh, just checking things out, and he um, he said that that he was living in the homeless shelter, and that they was going to be putting him out the next day. And I got to talking to him and everything, and I said, I said, you know what the Lord just dropped in my spirit, Mark? You are marked for greatness. You are not going to be out there on the street because He's got bigger things for you. Well, the next day, he, I said, I, I want you to come t tomorrow because I said, we're going to have all kinds of resources here. And he, he got a place. He's, he was going in TCC and was going to, I believe, going to get some help mm -hmm. and everything. So he come over by and I said, I, I was I was casing the place. I said, for you, looking for you all day and everything else. And I never saw you. And uh, I said, because I used you as a, as a, a witness. I said uh, that uh, you had said uh, that uh, you was you was getting ready to take your life, and I said uh, you cried out, Jesus help me. And I said as soon as you cried out, Jesus help me, the power come down, and you didn't want to end your life. And I said so I was using that about how 
the, the power of the name of Jesus that mm -hmm. demons have to flee. And he said, I wish I'd have heard you. And I, he said, but I won. And he said, I won a $25 gift card over here too. He said, so, uh, he said, I got a place to go. And so all praise to him. Oh, oh that's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, and is he the guy that you introduced me to somebody right when things were starting and he came up and said, is there anything I can do? And he said, you know, the toilets need clean. And he took off running for the toilet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. His yeah. name was Chris. And I met him the Different night guy. before, too. Okay. Yeah, this this guy's name was Chris. And I met him the night before, too. And and I said, I'm just, I've just come. I said, we're having an event tomorrow. And I just want to check the restrooms, see what they look like and everything. And he said, you get the cleaning stuff. He said, I'll clean them. He said, you don't need to be over there cleaning those restrooms like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And, and then he was all over the park the next day. He said, I'll be here early. He said, whatever you want. And he was he was keeping the trash picked up and all. That's, wherever that's he was really needed. cool. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. And he was going the next day to uh, bid on a job. And he said, I'm going to bid low because I, really I really need this job. Yeah. So. Good. Very good. Well, I want to tell you, I'm going to take this from you. Uh, I need to tell you, I thank God for you. And I thank you that you're willing to walk into places where people aren't willing to go. And I get it. I get it. But you don't do it foolishly. You, you take precautions. You make, sure, you make sure you're taken care of. And that's an important thing. But I just want you to keep it up, okay? Oh. Keep it up, girl. I got, I got it. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I'll hold it this time. I've been, I've been telling everybody all, all week and everything. I said I feel like a racehorse. It's in the starting gate. Would you just let me out of here so I can run? Girl, <laughs> run down these steps. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. There you go. I know my limit. Give her a hand. Would you, would you please do that? Yeah, I just, I'm amazed. I'm amazed at Diane, but I'm more amazed at God. I'm just amazed at what he does when people say, okay, Lord, here I am. I see the need, and I'm willing to do whatever is necessary to step into that. And I, I, man, I just thank God. I thank God for what he's doing. And Diane, I thank, thank you for stepping up and just obeying what God's laid on your heart. I know. Uh, sworn on out, Doc. <laughs> um, I asked to see through the eyes of God. That's right. And when you ask for it, he has a way of answering, doesn't he? He does. Amen. Um, we are going to, as we close out the book of Ephesians, again, I told you we're not closing it today, but I have to lengthen just a little bit what I, what I want to be able to share with you from what you're going to hear about here in the closing chapter of Ephesians. I've entitled this topic, Pray, 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 and Pray. And the reason I entitle it this is in the last... Uh, Close to the end, these three verses pop up where Paul is giving his final encouragement. And in these three verses, five times, he tells them to pray. Pray, 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 and pray. You can understand all the theology of the first three chapters of the book of Ephesians. You can understand what God expects from you and from me when it comes to being a follower because that's how Ephesians is laid out. Here's the theology and here's how it's applied to your life. And then he closes with what I believe is absolutely the most important thing and that is prayer. And he's going to really emphasize that. So the first thing I want you to notice ahead of time is this, that the book of Ephesians opens with all the blessings on which we stand. It opens with all the blessings on which we stand. And we really like that stuff. There's a danger to understanding these blessings and now be able to confidently say, I am a child of God, not because of what I've done, but because of what He has done. 
I have been forgiven. I have been redeemed at a price. I've been bought back. I have been saved. God has turned me around. He's done what people thought was impossible. And he's changed me. And I give him praise for that. And I'm going to live the rest of my days for him. Now here's, I'm going to give you a, a title I kind of put to this that is, it's an oxymoron, I know, but I, I want you to understand that the danger of, of knowing the blessings that we have in Christ and determining to walk in Christ, the danger is that we get to the place where we go, okay, I'm good. Man, God, thank you for what you've done. I've got it. And we end up stepping out into our life without really acknowledging Him any longer. Because I have His blessings. I, he has changed my life. Therefore, I've got it from here. That, that's a danger for all of us to walk into. And, and I, would call, I would label this person as what I would call a Christian atheist. I know it doesn't make sense, but I would label this person as a person who has trusted Christ as their Savior, has been saved by God, has been loved by God, and knows what it is to be a child of God, but believes that they can walk the rest of their life without His help. And you cannot do that. Amen. So we, we open with all of these blessings, and then... The, while the book of Ephesians opens with all the blessings on which we stand, it closes with the command to fall on our knees. So here's all of your blessings, but now that you have been saved, now that you have been blessed the way you have been blessed, you need, you must get on your knees. You must fall into an attitude of prayer. And because of that, that's what we're going to be dealing with today and next week for sure. I want to read to you Ephesians 6, verses 18 to 20. I'm just going to go off the screen here. And what? Pray. Okay. In the Spirit, on all occasions, with all kinds of what? Prayers. And what's the next word? Request. And request. I'll be talking about that in a minute. It's an interesting word. With this in mind... Be alert and always do what? Keep on praying. For all the Lord's people. Uh, pray. pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray, pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. I want you to notice this. This is really important. You don't miss this. When Paul is writing this letter to the Ephesians, he is writing it from prison. He's not a free man. As a matter of fact, he's in the process of preparing to stand trial because he goes around creating all kinds of mayhem, declaring that this guy named Jesus rose from the dead. And, and instead of shutting up about it, although they tried to shut him up, he, he kept on declaring to the point that he was arrested and now he is in, he's going to be on his way to Rome and he is going to, in Rome, he is going to be facing Caesar and plead his case to Caesar. And it's going to end with him being beheaded. In, in this time where he knows he's in prison and he knows that what lies in front of him is really a tragedy. It's just a tragedy, what is waiting for him. But I want you to notice what he prays for. This is important you get this. He asks the people of Ephesus to pray for him. I want you to pray for me. He doesn't ask prayer to be released from prison. He doesn't ask prayer to be made a... Um, an honor inmate to where he has more freedom than others. He doesn't even talk about prison or prison life. He asks one thing, would you pray for me so that at any opportunity I have, I can fearlessly proclaim the gospel, the Amen. good news. This is all that was on his mind. His mind was not 
oh gosh, I wonder what next house I'm going to buy, or I wonder what next kind of car I'm going to drive, or I wonder how much I have tucked away, and all, all that. He's not even dealing with that. In his difficulty, he is asking God to just give him the power to continue to proclaim, whether he's in prison or whether he's not. There's a lesson there for us. And I might be jumping ahead of myself, but that's okay. This lesson for us in your prayer life, in my prayer life, typically when we're really driven to our knees to pray, something's going on that we can't get our hands around. And so what do we do? We drop to our knees and pray. And when we pray, we're praying, God, take this away from me. God, please heal me. God, please provide finances for. God, please bless this. God, please bless that. And we're not even considering, God, use me to proclaim your love in the situation I'm in. I was up at Hillview this past week, and I was visiting Georgie Richard, who, who's doing better. She's, she continues to progress. And when I was up there, I told her that Marilyn Hempo was in the room two doors down from her. Marilyn comes here to the Rock as well, and has been going through some, she's there for therapy, and she, she'd been going through some really serious physical difficulties. Well. Number one, Georgie didn't know Marilyn. But as soon as I told her, she said, Rick, can I get in the wheelchair? I said, yeah. Uh, I had to have someone come put her in the wheelchair. And, and I, I said, what do you want to do? She goes, I want to go down to, uh, to Marilyn's room. And I, I, just, I just want to pray with her. And so she got in the chairs. I stood out in the hall, and then I wheeled her down to Marilyn's room. And as we walked in, Marilyn's face just lit up. So, I mean, it was a beautiful thing as here are two ladies who are in physical difficulty encouraging each other, taking each other by the hand. And there was a nurse in there, and she said, you all come on. And, you all, and so she just kind of stepped back. Well, listen, by the time that visit was over, the nurse was reduced to tears. She, she said, I've never seen something so sweet as they just actually ended up ministering to each other. What a great thing that here we are. We are in a therapy wing over at Hillview, and yet we believe God is still here with us, and we're going to let him use us in it. That's a big deal. And that was, that's kind of Paul's prayer here is that, that that's how it would be. Now, what I want to do is I want to tackle these five words he uses when he says pray. And, and so he's, because when he talks about your prayer life and about my prayer life, he's actually giving us guidance for how we are to pray, when we are to pray, and, and that sort of thing. So the first thing I want you to understand is we're to pray always. Yes. We're to pray always, he says. Uh, it's John MacArthur who, who said this. I, I, I read this in one of his books where he says, Prayer is like breathing. You don't have to tell yourself to breathe because the air exerts pressure on your lungs and forces you to breathe. So we breathe and we're not really thinking about it. As a Christian, not to pray is to hold your breath spiritually. That's, that's a really insightful statement by John MacArthur. Jesus is going to say this to you. Watch and pray always. Jesus is going to say that to his, his children. He's going to say this. Always pray and don't give up. Always pray and don't give up. The battle can be so intense that you find yourself in that you want to give up. You want, you want to throw in the towel. We, I know I have been here, and I'm certain, because we're all sort of in the same boat, I'm certain you have too, that we grow so weary, not in the prayer, we grow so weary in the delay. God, why aren't you answering this? Or why are you saying no? And, and so we, we find ourselves growing weary in it. 
And, and Jesus says, pray always and don't give up doing that. Keep on going. Keep on praying. Keep on trusting. Uh, since we're engaged in a spiritual battle, praying always, continuous prayer, is something that we need to practice. Because when all your physical ailments are taken care of, then you've got, still got to deal with Satan and all of his temptation and all the things he brings on. And so we only have two options then when we're, when we're facing a dilemma in our lives that has driven us to our knees. And it's this, we're either going to pray or we're going to give up. There's no other option there. We're going to pray or we're going to give up. And we're going to keep on praying. We'll talk about that in just a, a little deeper. The Old Testament Jewish prayer was scheduled three times a day. In the morning, at noontime, and in the evening. They still, if you would ever see a news clip or a picture um, on of the Wailing Wall there in Jerusalem, you will see in the morning and at noon and in the evening all of these worshipers coming to the wailing wall to do their scheduled prayers scheduled prayer is a thing of the past now because jesus doesn't call us just to hey be sure when you wake up you pray and be sure that at noontime you pray and be sure at evening time you pray now jesus is telling us that we're to pray always this is something that is to guide our lives um, it's no longer a scheduled prayer. Jesus made that pretty clear when he gave us that instruction. Check out these commands regarding prayer. There's four of them I'll have up here. You see in Romans 12, 12, it says what? Continue diligent. Continue diligent in prayer. Go ahead to the next one. What's the word? Continue. Continue in prayer. In everything, in everything pray. And pray without ceasing. And pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. What does continual prayer look like? What does it look like in my life? Because the first time I came across the verse, especially pray without ceasing, I was, I don't know, I, I, I'm really a, I need a visual to help me learn. Because when I just take words and I try to draw the visual myself, I usually get it wrong. And I'm going, how do you pray without ceasing? How do you do that? How do you go through your day and, and pray without ceasing? Look at this. To continually pray is to live every moment of your life in the presence of Jesus. Your very life should be a prayer to God. Now, I'm going to say this. This isn't boasting to say, hey, look at me and compare me to you. This isn't about that. But this is one of the areas that I have grown big time in my life. Prayer was just a set time for me. I'm going to pray. I'm all, most of the time, I can't say always, that'd be wrong. Most of the time, I'm going to pray when I'm going to eat. Some of you do that. Maybe all of you do that. doesn't matter if you're out at a restaurant or not. Uh, I was out with three other ministers at a lunch one day, and uh, one of the pastors was praying for the meal. And this really did happen. And so he just prayed for the meal, and then he said, Amen. And it was Floyd Adams. I don't know if you guys knew him or remember him or not. But Floyd was a pastor. And he, as soon as he said, Amen, everybody raised their head. He still had his head down. And he said, Hey, keep on praying because people are looking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then he started chuckling to himself. Yeah, so... Prayer, we're, we're not praying so that we can be seen praying. But this area where I have grown is that my prayer is not now, okay, okay I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray with my family before everybody goes to bed or I'm going to pray at my scheduled times when it's expected, that kind of thing at dinner. Prayer becomes your life. It doesn't mean that you're always constantly walking around mumbling something to God. It, it is this understanding that within you, and this is what's different from the Old Testament, within you, within Rick Clark and within you, 
If you are a follower of Jesus, the Holy Spirit resides in you. And now, you don't have to go to a building to find God. If you come in here in the middle of the week and this room is empty, God's not hanging out in here. Hey, man, I'm so glad you came in. God is hanging out in you. He lives in you. So wherever you are, He is. And even to make things a little weirder for you, whatever you're doing, mm -hmm. He's there. Amen. And the Scripture, because people didn't understand that with the Corinthian church, the Scripture is going to say to you, it's going to say to you that He is with you so much and he will not separate from you that whatever you are doing at that moment in time even in your weakest moment the essence of your actions is you turning to Jesus and saying hey come on let's do this he is in you he is a part of you and you can't separate him you don't want to separate him he said that he will never let you go in Scripture. He declares that. So you are his. If you are his 24-7, and you are constantly in his presence because he lives in you, then it seems to me that everything you do then is an act of prayer towards him. Yes. It might be a worship towards him. It might be an acknowledgement to him. It it might be a complaint to him. Lord, what's going on here? Whatever that is, that is you praying always. This is one of the reasons, and this has happened to me on a number of occasions, where when a tragedy happens, when something happens that has, over time, when something happens that has caused someone to go, oh, no, what are we going to do? Oh, no, I, we've got to have help. Oh, no, I can't believe this is happening. That kind of stuff used to freak me out, too. And I would find myself responding that way. This is an area I've grown. And it's not because I'm callous. It's because in my life, I have come to understand the faithfulness of God even when things don't work out the way I want them to work out. When things go south, God's still there. When things go against what you were hoping for, God is still there. He's still got you. When you fail, God is still there and He's got you. Because you can't separate yourself. So at some level, your, your, prayer, your life is that prayer to God so that when the unthinkable happens or the unforeseen happens... You don't respond with shock. You can respond with faith knowing that God has this. He's aware of this. And He's aware of where I am at in this situation at this time. Now to a lot of people that can come off as looking callous. Well, why don't you act shocked? Well, it's not that I'm not shocked. It's just that I believe God is going to carry us through this. I believe that. And I believe that for all of us who call God our God and our Savior. Okay, so pray always. Live your life as a prayer. Second thing, pray always all kinds of prayers and supplications. Do you remember the word requests that I told you? We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, from the verse we just read. That word is actually the word that says supplication. And, and I want you to see what these two words mean. Okay, let's, let's do this. Prayer is a general conversation. It's just general request. But supplication is specific prayer. It is focus. It is, it is intense. Um, we, are, we are told to pray all kinds of prayers. So, so here you see these kinds. I, I just put this gigantic list together. Go to the next slide if we can. So you pray on your feet or on your knees. 
You pray with folded hands or raised hands. You pray with your head lifted up or bowed down. You pray verbal prayers. You pray silent prayers. You pray public prayers and you pray private prayers. Loud cries or quiet whispers, planned or spontaneous, thanksgiving or confession. We're to pray, Paul said, all kinds of prayers and requests. This is what we are to do. So, and and I get this a lot. I I don't hate this. I just don't. It's funny to me how if I walk into a room and they're ser- getting ready to serve a meal, whew, man, we're glad you're here. We needed someone to pray. It's like, you didn't need me to pray. I mean, the same Jesus, the same spirit that resides in me resides in you. You pray. I've only had one person take me up on that. Oh, you can't put me on the spot like that. And I said, well, look, I mean, I know we're going into the presence of Jesus. When we pray, we're acknowledging his presence with us. Just talk to him. That's what prayer is. It's that general conversation that just naturally flows from you to your father. It's just that conversation. I encourage you tomorrow morning when you wake up and you get in the car and you're heading off some way and you're by yourself, Spend some time talking to God out loud as if he's sitting in the passenger seat. I really encourage you to, well, I don't know what I'd say to him. Well, I know what you need to say to him. God, I just want to thank you for loving me. I, have that conversation with him. Now, you might run off the road if, he, if you hear back and he goes, well, you know, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad I got you in my sight. Um, but the other side of it is you freak people out in the cars that are beside us. Dude, that guy is talking to himself. Um, so, so I, But I encourage you to do that. All kinds of prayers, it becomes a natural outflow of our lives. It was not that way for Rick Clark for a long time. Even when I was doing ministry um, and I was a preacher so that you expect that to happen all the time. No. No, I'm just like you. But I've learned, this is just something I've learned and that's related to how we recognize how intimate God is with us. And so we can have those conversations with him. So Paul is simply telling Christians to pray all times in all ways. I need to talk about this word supplication just for a second or the word request. Um, when simple prayer doesn't liberate you from whatever that burden is that you're carrying, when it requires more than just talking to God, when it gets to the place where the scripture would say he even understands the groanings of your spirit, when when your spirit is groaning inside with the things that you're praying for, that groan is the supplication. You need to supplicate or petition. Make your request to God. That's what the word means. Supplicate, petition. uh, In the Greek, those words mean to beg and plead with all that you have. With everything that you've got, you're begging and pleading pleading with God. Supplicate and petition means to humble yourself, to bow down, and the way I put it was, and to really pray. And you're going to see that in a passage of Scripture that many of you may know. Some of you may not know that this passage is here. Today, this is one of the great passages of Scripture that I'll give you. Philippians 4, verses 6 through 8. Let's look at that. Do not be what? Anxious. Anybody here anxious? You know what? Oh, yeah. I've definitely been there. Do you know that Rick Clark, there was a time where Rick Clark could not sit in this section in a middle seat I'd flip out I, I, I mean really it's like okay if something happens what do I do I, I, I mean I always found myself on the end of the road so I know you guys on the end I know what you're going through um, no I, um, don't be anxious don't be anxious about anything but in every situation now, t- turn to your neighbor and say in every situation yeah, in not, not in the ones where you feel like I need to talk to God about, but in every situation, by what? Prayer, Prayer and what? Petition. petition, which means supplication with thanksgiving. Present your requests to God. Can we go on to the next one? And the peace of God, this is what you're looking for anyway. 
And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and what? Your minds. And your minds in Christ Jesus. Keep going. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, give me the next word. Think. Think about these things. Don't let anxiety rule your mind. Now, I know when you're going through anxiety, it's one thing to say, okay, I'm not going to let it rule my mind. But yet it's got a big old grip on you. And it's like, okay, Rick, I just said that, and it's still ruling my mind. And, and my mind is ruling my body, and I'm just kind of in a mess right now. Well, I'm going to say to you first, man, I'm going somewhere where I'm going to go, but here we are. Uh, I'm going to say to you first, if you take medication for anxiety and any of the other mental struggles that you go through, listen to me, you are not sinning. I've had people tell me in the past that if you would trust God, you wouldn't need all that stuff anymore. Yeah. I've heard that from people. There are times where you may need medication to help you through a spot. But don't you dare expect the medication to bring peace in your heart. That's only coming from Jesus. Amen. And so when you are in a situation that you cannot grasp onto, he says, you need to pray and supplicate you need to pray and really pray. This isn't the kind of prayer that says, God, thank you for today. Bless me. Bless my kids and bless my family and bless my enemies, I guess, because you told me to do that. Um, amen. This is not that kind of prayer. This is the kind of prayer that is willing to spend time before the Father and agonize in prayer. Lord, I have to surrender this to you. I'm consumed by, by the things I can't control. And so I surrender my control. And I pray that your spirit will work in me to understand that you've got this. And you've got me in your hands. You already know the outcome. And so I surrender myself to you. And do you know that when you pray like that, you get up off your knees and you go off and just start doing whatever you normally do, you're going to have to go back and agonize again and again. I'm like, this is my trouble with this kind of prayer. I want God to be like a McDonald's drive-up window. I want to place my order and pick it up. And, and, and don't tell me to pull over and wait. Because if I, if I got to wait another minute for you to come walking in, I know you're going to get that car that's behind me before you get to me. I know, I know how you think, because I do too. And, and you get, well, see, I want God to operate that way. I want to be able to place my order with Him, drive around, pick it up, and keep on going. But there are times where that is not going to happen. And so there's where this continual surrender must come in. Things that are so far beyond your control. Um, okay, pray always. All kinds of prayers and supplications. And then pray specifically. And I want you to notice this. Um, Paul gets very specific when he's dealing with the church in Ephesus. And you know how specific he gets. He simply says, I'm asking you guys to pray for me. I'm asking you to pray for me so that I can speak with boldness when I declare the gospel. Would you please pray for me so that I can fearlessly proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ? Please pray for me. And he's just, he's just being honest within himself. Uh, I, I wish he would have added this in this prayer, but he doesn't. Um, I want And pray for yourselves is what I want to say. Please, please be praying for me as I proclaim the gospel, but pray for yourselves too that God will give you the ability to fearlessly proclaim Him. I wish that was there, but it's not. It wasn't on Paul's mind at that time. So Paul is asking believers to pray for him specifically, 
Why is he doing that? Why is he asking that? Look at this next slide. It says this, so that, this is what he's going to say in, in the book of Ephesians. So that whenever I speak, the right words will be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the gospel. This is his specific prayer. And I just wanted you to see that there's a so that there. God, I'm praying so that. That's why I'm coming to you. Lord, I, I, I'm coming to you so that. His focus is on Jesus. Um, and, and I'm going to share some really cool things with you here in just a moment. Pray, pray always. All kinds of prayers and supplications. Pray specifically. Always stay alert and keep praying even when the answer is not coming quick enough for you. Keep on doing that. That's out of uh, chapter 6, verse 18 there in Ephesians. All of us want God to say yes to our requests. And if God doesn't say yes to your requests, then you walk away from your prayer going, well, that's a waste of time because God didn't answer. Well, yeah, he did answer. Because no is an answer. Imagine, all of you who have ever parented a child, Imagine if you said yes to every request your child made of you. Yeah, you're right. That would be a mess. And it would be. The reason you hold back from your children is because there are times where you are protecting them. You know that to say yes would be to put them in danger. And so you have your limits you, and it's not because you're being mean. It's because you love your children. And so in loving your children, you desire to guide them in the right direction. And sometimes guiding them demands you to say no to a request. So when God doesn't answer your prayer the way you want him to or the way you expect him to, then rather than fight against God, it's time to trust him that he knows something that you do not know. And there's a delay in the answer, which next week I'm going to be spending some time on. There's a delay in the answer, or the answer is simply a quick no. No, I'm not going to do that for you. Not right now, and maybe a not ever. So for you all who pray in relationships looking for a relationship going, God, just send me the right woman or send me the right man. And then that person you have in mind, they'll come around. God just answered your prayer. You know, I know who you want. I mean, when Cindy said, I don't want to marry a preacher. Honey, I love you. I, and, and I'm so glad you did marry a preacher. Um, uh, and, and such such a strong blessing in my life, to be sure. And and so we, when we pray, we trust that God has a yes and that God has a no, and then God also has a wait in the prayer. Um, okay, so let's see. This is what I want to share with you. I got to thinking about all the times that we have prayed for people. I've prayed for people. You've prayed for people. And your prayer was really coming out of a good place. There was someone on the prayer list that would come through the Rock Church. And it's a prayer that this person is going to the emergency room. And so could you please pray for these people? And people that are on that <laughs> prayer chain, on that link, they you start seeing prayers, prayers, prayers. So people begin praying. And when we're praying, we, we want to see answers. We, want, we don't want our prayers to just be empty. We want to see answers. We want to see God respond. And yet, when he responds with a no, it just kind of, boy, it undoes us a little bit. It makes you ask questions like, well, God, if, if you just weren't going to do anything, then why are we praying anyway? You know, and, and, and I realize that the subject we're on can bring up all sorts of questions and, and I can answer every one of your questions with this one statement. You are never going to figure this out 
with your finite, limited thinking. It, it, it won't happen. What, what you have to be brought to is a place where you can say, I'm bringing this petition to God and I trust Him. And whatever He does, whatever He chooses, I may not understand it, I may not like it, but it's in His hands. And that's what He's told us to do. So we'll gather, just last week we gathered up here. Uh, we'll gather folks up here at the end of the service. If someone pr wants to be prayed for and asks, that you'll say, would you anoint me and pray for me? Well, they get that from Scripture. They get that from the book of James, which says, if there's any sick among you, let them call the elders of the church together, and they will anoint them with oil, and, and they will pray. And they will pray, and the prayer of the righteous avails much, and there will be healing and all of that. So what we're doing when we pray for a person we're doing what God says to do. What we can't do is tell you what the outcome is. What we're doing is we are expressing in faith that God knows what's going on and that he has this situation in his hands. And do you know, this, this is some stuff that just kind of got me pumped up as I was as I was thinking about this, we've prayed for a lot of people here at the rock, here at the rock. And we have witnessed a variety of no's, but we have witnessed a variety of yeses as well. And typically we don't talk about the yeses. We talk about, hey, God, where were you? Why didn't you do something? Let's talk about the yeses just for a second. I, I, I wrote these, these down here. Here's some of the things we've witnessed right here at the rock. If you've been coming here long enough, you witnessed it as well. Um, we've seen God take a young high school student who was in a terrible auto accident with the initial prognosis of paraplegic at best, unable to function cognitively in society, unable to walk again. We've had that. We've had that here. We've had the, the mom and, and the, the dad, the families chasing after hospital after hospital to to see this this young adult to see them in such a difficult position we the church the rock brought a wheelchair ramp to their house the rock brought a hospital bed to the house and was able to provide that and and i remember all the guys who helped move that in and get that all set up and so we and we left and we felt like, okay, we've done what we can do because this girl is coming home from the hospital <laughs> and, and she's going to need to be have this round, round the clock care. So what do we do? We have seen this girl and seen God bring life back to her broken body. We've seen him bring sanity to her damaged brain. We have seen him bring strength to her weak and unstable legs. And we have seen in that process even a soul that was dead in Christ come to Christ. We've seen that. We've witnessed it right here. You might have been here that day that she came walking down the aisle and walking over here and we brought her up on the stage. As, as Layla gave testimony to what God had done. We have seen that. God did that. There's no one here that did that. There's not a doctor that did that, although they took really good care of her. But here she was beating every, every prognosis, every outlook was beaten. And, and now uh, it's, it's just it's an amazing thing to see. Uh, let's see, we've seen God take... Um, take a husband and a father who had been in what was expected to be a fatal accident and delivered him from a fatal outcome. He's a physical therapist that when John's here, he's sitting right over, over here and God raised him up from a tragic, tragic, possibly tragic accident. He used Brian Cottle and others to come on the scene to minister to him as he laid beside the road in the, on that dark night on the uh, bypass. Yeah, we've seen that. We've seen God raise him up. And and he was so kind as Cindy was going through her 
um, knee replacement surgery. He, he would be the guy, he was so kind to stop by the house on a Friday, and uh, Friday morning, and he would come and just put Cindy through the paces a little bit with therapy just to help her along. And, and it, was a, it was a blessing, but we've seen God do that. And now we're seeing God work again in another way, which is, this is so cool to me. But how many of you remember praying up here last week? Yeah. When we were praying up here last week, we were praying for Jackie Murphy, Chris's wife, and with, with a really difficult issue in the blood that the, um, the fear was that it was leukemia and that it could be in a full-born stage. And she was having blood tests, blood work done this past Wednesday. So we, she asked to be prayed for, and we gathered up here, and we anointed her. We prayed for her just like we did everybody else. We claim no power. We don't have that. That's a God thing. And, and I've got to – I'm going to have this on the overhead. Um, they returned home from the James this past Wednesday, um, and Chris sent me a text. I asked him, just please keep me posted when you hear something. And, and what did the text say? The numbers are low at this point. And then look at the next line. There's nothing to be concerned about. That's what the doctor said. There's nothing to be concerned about. Although at the time, everything pointed to something to be concerned about. And so uh, we know that in three weeks, am I right about that, Jackie and Chris? In three weeks, we'll have the results of, of any of the other testing they're, they're doing. It was really cool to come in this morning and see Jackie sitting over here because Chris is up here practicing on the stage with the praise band. And um, you could just see peace all over her face. I mean, it's amazing that God can do this when we pray. There are things he says no to, but there certainly are things he says yes to. So I'll wrap this up. Our time together here today, I'll wrap this up with this statement. Boom. Pray what? All the time in all ways. All the time in all ways. Staying alert for how God is going to answer you. That's what Paul is saying here, telling us. Pray, 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 and pray. So don't give up. Don't throw in the towel on your prayer life. And don't live your life as if you don't need prayer. So stay in constant communion with your Father who loves you. And He will do, I believe, what's best. And if what's best for me is that He calls me home to heaven, can I tell you this? That's the best thing for anybody who trusts Jesus. Now, we have trouble with that, I know. Because we're really comfortable where we live. But listen, I'll, I'll trade this trailer park in for heaven any day. And so, when God calls me home, the thing I used to fear, uh, getting cancer, getting sick, dying, those things that I used to fear, is because I didn't really understand. But when I draw my last breath here, I will be in the presence of my Savior. That is not a bad thing. Please understand that. So if you come attending my funeral, I hope you'll come. <laughs> if, if, if you come attending my funeral, don't come here weeping. Come here rejoicing. Because the guy that you might be feeling sorry for, oh man, he went through such this and that and all that, the guy you might be feeling sorry for isn't feeling sorry for himself. I'm in the presence of Jesus. That's where I'll be. And so celebrate that. We can celebrate the worst that the world can throw at us. The worst that Satan can throw at us. We can celebrate it because we are confident that the one who loves me, who has saved me, will never let me go and has promised me that when I draw my last breath... I will be taken to be with him forever. That is a blessing beyond all blessings. And I'm good with that. Now, next week, next week when we get together, last thing I'll tell you, and then we're going to pray. And pray and pray and pray and pray. Um, what, I, I want to deal with this. Why should our lives be centered around prayer? There's going to be really something uh, in my mind that was a real eye-opener. 
as I studied the scriptures, man, I came across something uh, from a prayer warrior in scripture. The prayer warrior I'm talking about is Daniel. And here's a guy who was before the Lord all the time. And so uh, we're going to talk about him a little bit. And in talking about him, man, the scripture just kind of opens up a whole new view into what goes on during prayer. And so we'll, we'll be dealing with that next week and a couple of other things as well as we wrap up this topic, okay? Let's bow our heads together. Pastor yes. May I have... I want to talk about this prayer thing. Uh-huh. To me, to prayer is... It's a communication with God that you don't get an re immediate response back. It's like you're not talking to another person. Right. And getting an answer back. But I've been learning over recent months and stuff. Not only do I pray, but a lot of times I do feel like I'm getting a conversation with yeah. God. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Things, especially all the lessons, all the teachings inside the Bible, all of a sudden come back to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the situation in which I'm at. Yeah. So you can understand what you're going through, what you're experiencing. I'm here. It's going to take time. And that's and I think that would be one of the reasons David would write and say, I, I'm going to hide God's word where? In my heart. And, and when we hide it in our heart, then God can recall those things that we have hidden in our heart. And yes, absolutely. And that is certainly one of the ways I would say he communicates with us. He brings it to mind, yeah. those things that we've heard, that we've stored here. And it's like having the conversation with him because I hear the conversation. No doubt it's me having the conversation. Mm -hmm. But it's God's word. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that amazing? Yeah. It just, I know, I know. It just blows your mind. I mean, it does mine. I just kind of walk around with my mouth hung wide open because I'm so, I'm so in awe of what God does, is doing. I'm just like, oh wow. So, okay, can we pray together? Lord Jesus, I thank you for the privilege you have given us to even come into your presence. The privilege that we have to have a conversation with you. The privilege that we have when we walk out of the church gathering and we just go to our home or we take a, take a walk or whatever we're doing that we are in your presence and that we can communicate with you. And I thank you for how you communicate with us. I thank you that you use your word, that you call to our me recall to our memory those things that you have planted in our lives. And so, Lord, I pray for this body of believers. I pray for anyone who is hearing this. I, I just ask that their hearts would be open to realize that you're right there. To realize that you desire communication with them. And then, Lord, I, I pray for this as well. I pray that we don't just do all the talking but that we spend time in quietness listening. And so, Lord, we're your children. We love you. We trust you. And even though there's things you determine that we don't understand or we don't necessarily like, we know and trust that you have all things in your hand. You see the full picture that we don't see. And so we trust you. This week as we go, I ask you, just in a spiritual sense, tap us on the shoulder while we're out in the car by ourselves and say, hey, I'm here. You want to talk? And allow us the joy of knowing that we can have a conversation with you. In your great name I pray, amen. 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 Rock Church, thank you so much for being here today. God bless you as you go. We'll see you next week.